Welcome back to the Spectrum Synth tutorial series. In this episode, what I'd like to do is set up an interesting sound in the wavetable section and then sample it into the grain section. This resampling could be done with any of the sound sources in Spectrum Synth. I've chosen patch 40 in the initialization patches, which is called Saturated Wave Morph. In this patch, I've got an envelope generator gradually transforming the wave from a sawtooth to a triangle by having a sawtooth loaded in wave slot 3 and a triangle loaded in wave slot 2, and have assigned envelope generator 2 to the task of controlling the wave slot position. With just a little bit of range, we're only getting positional movement from 3 down to 2. And I've also added a little bit of saturation to add some interesting sizzle to the wave. Let's have a listen to this sound. <laughs> I've also got this sound set to mono unison mode with four voices stacked and detuned slightly. We're going to be able to record this sound into an audio file and load it into the grain synthesizer. The cool thing about the stacked unison mode is that we're going to be able to play it polyphonically where each note has the same thickness. And the benefit of the grain synth is that we're going to have all time elements being consistent across the different keys that we're playing. So both the timing of the morph transition and also the modulation time of the chorusing effect of the stacked voices is going to stay consistent across the different notes that we play. I could play a note and record it into my digital audio workstation, but we can do it just as easily right in Reactor. If you click on the record button here, you have a little recording pane which enables you to activate the record button, and as soon as you hit the play button, an audio file will start to be recorded. So what I'm going to do is hit play and then play a note, and it'll deposit that audio file on my desktop. <laughs> There we go, let's take a look. And here it is. I'm going to rename this audio file. We can close that recording pane now. Before loading that sample into Reactor, I'm going to edit off the dead air at the front of the sample. So I'm just going to drop it into Logic and edit it there. There we go, a nice tidy start and end point. Now to add this into the grain synthesizer table of samples, there are a couple of different ways to do it. You could just drag and drop it on the sample picture here, but I'm going to suggest that we open up the sample list. There are some adjustments that we'll have to make on the sample list anyway. So click here to open up the sample list editor. I'm just going to rearrange my windows a little bit. You see the list of all the samples that are loaded in the grain synth section. Ordinarily, these low and high numbers refer to allocation on the keyboard. In this usage of the grain synth, we're not actually using keys to switch samples. So each sample that's loaded has a root key and a low and a high note value which are set to be the same number. This value equals the sample choice when chosen here in the grain synth. So if we choose to click on this L button, we're seeing the identification number of the sample in consecutive order. And you can see that actually the lowest sample number is 48. Numbers 0 to 47 are actually available for us to add new samples. And there are some available at the top of the list as well, numbers 84 and upwards. So if you're loading samples, then you can load in those two areas. So you can take your sample and drag it and drop it directly on the list. And we'll get a message about encoding and analyzing the file by Reactor. I recommend that you say yes to this so that it will speed up the loading of your files when you load the instrument. When you drop the sample in, it'll most likely give you the wrong assignment number. So we're going to type in number 47 for this spot. And with the sample highlighted, activate the embed box. That enables the sample to be included when you do a save on your ensemble. And once you've selected the appropriate number, in our case 47, and press a key, you'll see and hear your sample playing in the grain synth. You'll have to find the right root note offset to make sure that you get concert pitch. You can bring in the original wavetable sound and compare the pitch. Playing the new grain sample with the original and detuning it a little bit gets a nice thickening effect. So what I've shown you here is that any particular sound that you're making in Spectrum Synth can be resampled and placed into the granular synth section. Let's do one more with a stacked sound of many components. Let's try this one, a little blend of wavetable, grain flute, solo oscillators, and a little bit of noise generator. So let's record that. There we go. Quick edit in Logic. And what I'll do is I'll go to a default patch in the granular synthesis folder and just use patch 1 as a default patch. 
That sets up the parameters in a relatively neutral way on the grain synth. And then we'll drop that down into the grain sample menu and set the appropriate sample number and root transposition value. Choose sample 46 here. And there's our grain version of that sample. Nice. Here's another example of that technique. You'll hear the wavetable section first. And here's the grain synth version playing of the resampled sound. Let's put the two together. So here I have the velocity value sending to the Grand Central Station and is sent to control grain position. That enables harder played notes to start the sample earlier where the sample was brighter. Here's another example of sampling the wavetable action. And here's one final example based on the wave morphing that you heard at the beginning of this tutorial. This one uses the animator pad to move some filters around. I'm Don Garbutt. Thanks for watching this tutorial.